Um, my name is Helena and I'll be moderating this session and your presenter Jimmit will be talking about project management. So we're very excited to bring you project management from Husky Robotics. Before we begin, I'm just going to go over a few things. So I'm a, I'm a sophomore and I've been in Husky Robotics for two years and Jimmit is a senior and he's been there all four years. Um, and then I'm going to go over how we'll continue and what you guys can do during the presentation. So all of you are muted for now, but as it goes on, or if you have questions, feel free to raise your hand so we can address your question or use the chat feature. Um, or, and then once I call on you, feel free to unmute and ask any questions you need. Um, so along with that, yep, you can chat, use the everything chat, private, private message me, or um, you can ask Jim or myself questions um, by the chat or using the symbols or the reactions features appropriately. Um, finally, I'd like to let you know that these are being recorded and now we will let Jim go ahead with the presentation. Awesome, thank you for the introduction. Again, my name is Jimmit. I'm a rising senior at Naperville North High School, and I'm one of the four captains of Team 3061 Husky Robotics. Yeah. Specif specifically, I am the project manager, which means I overlook assigning tasks, holding members accountable, and making sure we have a solid plan during the season. Project management uh, versus leadership is an important distinction that we will go over in this presentation. And along with that, we want you to be as prepared for the build season. So you will get an understanding of how to best uh, contribute to the objectives of the team, get at least a, a concept of what occurs in the higher level project management of the team and why. And this will teach students how to be a student led team. All right, so the whole point oh, of- Oh yeah, Jeremy might share a screen, so yeah. Uh, what? Yeah, Jeremy's is much better. Uh, sorry, I didn't understand. Hello? Wait, Helena. Uh, could you type your question in the chat maybe and then we can answer it? All right, no worries. Uh, so the whole point of project management is to build a high performing team that continues to learn contribute and have fun at the same time. A lot of teams have the skills and potential to be successful, but the organization is failing to meet these needs. And in order to accomplish this, we must maximize efficiency and give attention to detail. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. The ultimate objective of project management is to maximize a team's efficiency. Given the six week time period that we are bound by, to build our robot. Without a solid structure, a team's productivity might often crumble. Even with a structure, there's always ways in which you can increase your, uh, increase your efficiency and make your team better. Here is a diagram that helps stress this point. The orange represents your team without good project management. A subset of maximizing efficiency is adapting to changing conditions. If the team is uh, well-structured and scheduled, it should be able to maintain that efficiency as the robot evolves through the course of the build season. First, it's important to develop a set of team values. These are our team values. After this presentation, you might feel like these ideas may not work for you and your team, and that's totally okay. It is good to know what works, but it's also good to know what doesn't work. You can see here uh, that our priorities include being able to change to changing circumstances uh, instead of having to follow a set path uh, that we have already determined at the beginning. We want to prioritize uh, individuals and the interaction instead of focusing on the nitty gritty tools and processes, including working on the emotional state of our team as well as making sure our team members are respecting each other. We also put a big focus on collaboration instead of arguments and negotiations and make sure that the team members are comfortable with getting help when they actually need help. So we use something called Agile. 
Now, Agile is a type of project management. In the traditional form of project management, uh, known as the waterfall method, it's known as, it's very rigid. It's based off making one plan and sticking through it all throughout your season. Agile, however, is more designed off the objective uh, that you can easily change to different circumstances as you learn new information. It gives a high priority to communication, whether it be within the team or between team members and the product owner. So uh, the, you would want to have a product owner in your team who makes decisions as to uh, what needs to be strategically prioritized. This can even be your coach in smaller teams, or it can be a team member. For us, it was the strategic captain who is the product owner. Agile divides the project up into sprints. So sprint is a set period of time. For example, for us, one sprint is one week, during which specific tasks must be completed. We follow the same cycle every sprint uh, or every week, which helps enforce discussion and collaboration between these periods of time. So agile is a methodology, meaning it isn't like a specific framework for leading your team. Think about it like big picture goals. I also like to think about Agile as like a mindset where communication, collaboration, and adaption uh, to change is given the highest priority in your team. As you can see here, this is what a lot of FLL teams are structured like. At the high school level, for us, this chart used to be much bigger. There were three sections, one for business, one for robot, one for strategy. And the problem with this is that you can see there's a lot of vertical columns. And what, what tends to happen is that there's limited communication across these columns, across these uh, sub teams or across your uh, team members. So the circles represent uh, your leads and your, uh, and your coach. And then these boxes are the people, individual people who are responsible for these specific areas of your sub team. So for example, what happens is the mechanical team has no idea if the fabrication team was making the part they wanted correctly. That may be something like if the, uh, if the project team had no idea what the robot team is doing. So you want to have this uh, communication. And that's why we came up with a matrix structure. Obviously, our matrix is much larger and more complicated with many sub teams and many captains. But I've made a simplified version for FLL teams here. Uh, so what you, what you can see here is, right, all of these are much more connected. Uh, so do, are these the sub teams that you guys recognize from your team? All right, I'm gonna assume uh, that you recognize these sub teams from your team. But what the new, new idea here is having feature project managers. So these columns here are dedicated for features, like individual subset of your robot or your team. Here are some examples. Uh, so there's the mission one, right? So let's say you want to have your robot go and collect something and that requires some assembly that has an arm. And so the feature project management a manager would be overlooking, making sure that their coding team uh, is ready with their code and the robot team is working on the physical uh, components and making sure that's being assembled correctly. You might also consider having a feature project manager did, dedicated to integrating core values within your coding team, your robot team, and your project team because I know this year they changed it a little bit and you're, you're not gonna have a core values presentation. We still wanna make sure that uh, those are integrated within your other teams. All right, so again, the role of a feature project manager is making sure the communication happens across the sub team. They make sure the robot time is prioritized. Uh, they're also aware of the workflow that they're, and they're using their time efficiently. Uh, if there, even if there's no immediate work. So for example, making sure the electrical system for their feature is being processed while the robot is still being fabricated. 
it is important uh, that they're not the ones doing the stuff, but instead the ones overlooking and assigning the stuff. So in the FLL level, this may mean starting to code the robot even before you finish building it so that you can test much faster. All right, the next thing I wanna talk about is coming up with a high level build season schedule plan. Again, uh, the definition of a sprint is up to a team. So for FLL, uh, this would be breaking up into what needs to be done per sub team for each meeting. For example, if your team defined a sprint as a week, during week one, your team may want to have voted on a potential topic for a robot uh, or for a project, decided on what missions they want to complete for the robot, and uh, complete X amount of building uh, team building activities for core values. Uh, this is more in depth about when you want to do prototyping and strategy and making sure you have enough time to test as well as practice. So we use something called Scrum. Now Scrum is based off of that agile methodology that I talked earlier. Under Scrum, under the Scrum framework, what you do is separate your work into features, stories, and tasks. For example, the drivetrain is a big picture feature. So your main robot is your big picture feature. Now stories is what your drivetrain needs, for example it needs to be able to clear your bumps on the field. Now those tasks are those individual actions that you need to complete the stories. So uh, for example, you need to attach a beam between the block and the axle for increased stability. And those are your tasks. So Scrum has uh, these values uh, that, are, that are the five values of Scrum. All right, again, for us, one sprint is one week. So at the end of every sprint, there's a sprint review with the product owner who, who can be your coach or it could be a team member, depending on the size of your team, where you update them with any progress and uh, any critiques that, that, that you have that you can use to make your product better. So uh, this reflection period is very essential in order to improve your quality of your later sprints. Once again, this will help maximize your efficiency and you may find some things that aren't working and some things that are working really well that you want to continue throughout your other sprints. After your retrospective and review, uh, the meeting should end with your next steps. This is fittingly known as the sprint planning meeting. Here, you discuss which tasks are to be assigned to the next sprint, who is responsible for each of those tasks, as well as uh, what priority that you're going to do those tasks in. All of this needs to be done in an organizational tool, which I will cover later, and it'll make a lot more sense that way. So these meetings are essential to ensure that communication, uh, as long as the structure is enforced and the priorities of the product can be easily updated frequently. This ultimately increases the quality of your product because you're planning for these changes in your plan. If a feature of your robot is completed, you can also demo it and uh, show your product owner along with your other team members to make sure it matches their expectation. I will talk more about the definition of done when I go over the organizational tool, which is a very important key concept in project management. All right. So to summarize, there's three types of meetings. On Saturday, for us, we have a sprint planning meeting where we look at those tasks and stories and organize, our, uh, organize them into a backlog and one for the following sprint. So the backlog is a place where uh, you put your tasks that, are going, that you're going to do later and not in the next sprint so that you have a list of things that you need to do eventually. We also have a Monday meeting where we go uh, through team members and assign them with specific tasks or in stories for that week. This may be in the same meeting, depending on how large or small your team is. And then the big uh, thing with Scrum is that you have a daily stand-up meeting. 
Now, this is where each team member or each feature project manager goes over uh, what they have done, what they're going to do, and if, if they have any roadblocks. And this is important because your whole team hears what, what any roadblocks that you're facing. And if they know how to solve them, uh, you don't have to like wait for communication. Everything is right there. And it's very quick and efficient. Now, feature project managers might have multiple roles depending on how your team is fully structured. So they may be responsible for presentations or even how uh, have to code the robot. But you have to remember that during your sprint planning meetings, uh, where you make a plan for the following week, that you account for such time constraints. And uh, sometimes you might even have to prioritize uh, one task over the other. In these situations, what you should do is look at your team goals, your team values, and your strategy for the team to make the best decision possible. And you can see here, I have divided the roles of team leads and feature project managers. So feature project manager, uh, remember, are responsible for the big picture and the workflow of their feature, so their mission or the core values. And this role is primarily held by students. Team leads, however, are responsible for a small picture. So for example, if, uh, if the code breaks and they need to fix this code or you want to ask how to fix this code, right? This could be even fulfilled by coaches uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be your students, depending on, again, how your team is structured and how many members you have. You also wanna make sure your feature project managers are walking around following up all throughout the team to ensure that their task is being completed in a timely manner. And don't forget to have those sprint planning meetings as well as the daily stand-up meetings. Those are, those are very important in maintaining your communication lines. Now I'm going to go over uh, an interaction tool called Trello, and this will clear a lot of things up that we use and I recommend. So I'm going to click on this link. Uh, can you still see my screen with the blue Trello? Yeah. All right. Okay, so the you can see that your team is split into five distinct uh, lists, right? So you have an inbox where any team member can add uh, any task that they uh, find out that needs to be done. And during your sprint planning meetings, what you can do is move this card to either backlog or you can move it to your sprint one, depending on how urgent that task is. So for example, if you want to make LED hats for a presentation, that may not be the first thing that you do and you want to wait for it and you put it in your backlog. The next thing that you have is sprint one. This is your current sprint. During your sprint planning meeting, you want to come up with a sprint goal. And this is what your robot or your project will look like at the end of the sprint. So you have something to work towards. And while working towards that, you will have specific cards where you have your uh, task list. So inside you have a checklist that you can make and add tasks. So for example, if you want to finish your base of your drivetrain or your base of your robot, you want to determine which pegs are the most efficient. You want to determine uh, which wheels or which tires are the most uh, best for grip or stability. And you want to determine these combinations. So as you go along, you can even check off these boxes and it will show you how much you've done. Additionally, you can uh, look at, uh, you can assign team members to it. So right now I've assigned myself to this card, which means that when you look, look at your card, you can see exactly who is working on uh, this specific uh, list, a card for in the list. The next thing is to list for done and confirm done. This is very important because the definition of done for you might not be the same for others, right? So what you want to do is make sure that you have a, uh, you have a solid idea of what done is. So that's why we have two people checking it. The person who moves this card to done is not the person who moves it to confirm done. And let's say you wanna code your mechanism for the robot. And this may mean coding the start action, picking it up and dropping it off. 
but you want, also want to test it 10 times. However, for mechanism Y, after you have done those things, you might find out that you also have to return to home base because that's the last thing that you do before you uh, make any changes to your robot. So you want to account for these uh, little things and that's why generally a coach or your captain can move the things from done to confirm done. That way there isn't uh, any, any, uh, any, any discrepancy of what you thought was going to be done and what is actually done. All right. And then the last thing I want to talk about in this presentation is COVID-19. So as I've mentioned a lot, communication is the key for the Scrum uh, system to work. And uh, COVID-19 has obviously caused a lot of issues with that. So you want to com continue to maintain these good lines of communication. And this may mean making an availability spreadsheet yeah, if your team is super organized and knows who, know who is going to be at, uh, at the team meeting and who's not gonna be at the team meeting. You also wanna make sure your team members know when you're not gonna be able to join some meetings. You also wanna put a big emphasis on team bonding over getting everything done because you want to focus on the long-term uh, efficiency of your team. We also, uh, is a, it is a great idea to create some video resources. Uh, we will have a later presentation on how to create such resources, but I would highly recommend you go to that and create some video resources for your team for now, and they will also help in the long run. You also wanna limit the amount of Zoom calls because if you have too many, people will get overwhelmed because we're all doing online school and it might get uh, really frustrating to have to join so many Zoom calls. It is a good idea to find creative ways to engage people. Even at the high school level, we have memes and cahoots to make sure that our team is still bonding and having fun. One thing that worked really well is a big sibling, little sibling system uh, that might translate to a buddy system in FLL where you have another team member that you can talk to if you have any concerns or issues. The last thing is have a team chat where uh, you can communicate with your team members. So Google Hangouts or GroupMe where you can talk to your team members and have proper communication if needed. All right, um, real quick, there's only five minutes left. Yeah, okay, we're done, there we go. So yeah. um, we can open it up for questions, either in the chat, raise your hand, we can ask the presenter or something, private messages to either of us. And this can be about the whole presentation, ranging from anything, because we reserve these last few minutes for that. All right, Jimmy, is there anything else that there's a few other points just to like start up some questions or anything final? You can give people some time if they need it for questions. Yeah, uh, if you ever need anything, uh, you can also ask uh, during our uh, Q&A at the end if you think of questions, but I think those are the only other things um, that I had for the presentation. All right. Um, if there are any questions, please ask them now in the chat. Oh. Can I just ask you guys one thing? Yes, so of course. When, when you guys changed your team culture from the top-down structure to the cross-team cross structure using this method, like how did, your, how did your team culture change as a result? What did it do for you guys? Uh, I would say it really helped with like cross-team communication, right? So before what would happen is uh, people would want to make something uh, and they, they ordered a part from mechanical, but uh, for fabrication, right? So they wanted like this metal beam. Now the thing is, uh, the, there, it wasn't specific enough to where they know exactly what size holes uh, they need or what, what the tolerance is for the holes. So for example, you only want it to be 0.1 or 0.2 off from the holes that you need. And, this would cause like a lot of redesigns and having to waste a lot of parts. And it changed because once you have feature project managers, you can, you can make sure that they're overlooking fabrication as they make that part and also talk to mechanical 
and they both have a clear understanding. So this gives like a pathway between them and that really helped a lot. Thank you. Uh, so Evan asked how many people we have. We have about 110 plus, I would like to say. Uh, and we also have a, had a bunch of new members, so still okay. growing a lot. Actually, he asked how many people you, we do we think should be on a team? Oh, I can oh, yeah. field that if you want. Um, so for I'm, I'm an ex FLO coach, and 10 fourth graders is really hard to impossible. 10 eighth graders can be great. Um, if it's a multi-age team, um, I, I would say like the ideal number is six or seven. Um, but again, it depends on your team and it depends on the ages. If you have a multi-age team that has been in it for a while and the older students can help the younger students, that's great. Um, but you, you, need to, uh, you need to go with um, what's comfortable for you. And the other thing you need to consider is in this um, current situation that we're all in, you know, how many students could you comfortably fit in whatever space you have? Um, and that's, that's a question that everybody needs to kind of answer for themselves. <laughs>